Hello and welcome back to the fourth and final sealed deck video in our Monarch Unlimited series. My name is Jesse Marshall and I'm here with a, another sealed deck video that, as I said, is going to be the last in this particular series. We'll hopefully have some more coming up again. If it's the sort of thing that you guys enjoy, please let me know in the comments. Um, we've got some gameplay video that's out this week and we're also going to have some more deck text coming up shortly. So don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel and I hope you enjoy another sealed deck video. All right, so welcome back for our fourth Monarch Seal deck. So we've had a Prism, a Chain, and a Levia. So far, will it finally be Bolton's turn here? Let's find out. So a Dread Screamer Blue. Again, we've, we've talked about the importance of Dread Screamers in Levia already. So nice to see another Dread Screamer coming forward there. Uh, we've got a Bounding Demagon, a uh, Graveling Growl, Spears of Surreality, a Red Take Flight. Oh, that's a good start as our first Bolton card. That's just about as good as they come. Uh, Red Zealous Belting. Put our packs up there again. I keep starting on the right-hand side. Uh, a Red Overload, which is also decent in Bolton or just about anything uh, to come in late in the game. A Blue Surging Militia. A Rising Solitide. A Foil Ironhide Plate. Uh, haven't seen uh, any of the cold foil uh, equipment from this set yet, actually, so that's a nice looking card. Not that I'm ever going to play Ironhide Plate in a constructed deck, but might play it in this sealed deck. Let's see. A Halo of Illumination, so we got the double equipment out of that pack, which is really handy, actually. Um, an Invigorating Light, very nice blue Invigorating Light for Prism. Uh, a Plow Through for Bolton which is, again, another really nice Bolton card. So starting off with two red Bolton cards, which is kind of where you want to be at. You know, we can always pick up yellows and other things. You know, we've got this yellow Rising Solitide, whatever. But on our key cards like Plow Through and Take Flight, we really want those to be coming through in red to give us the best ability to actually set up big turns. Because that can be one of the challenges of Bolton is coming in big enough and hard enough to actually overwhelm opponents in sealed, particularly when, you know, Prism gets so many powerful attacks to come back the other way, and you just don't have the six power attacks yourself to, to pop the Phantasms. A Graveling Growl, a Piercing Shadow Vise, a second swing, not, not the best, a uh, swing and a miss for Bolton there. Across the line though, another red charge card, so looking good. Yinty Yanty, a Zealous Belting in red again. So these are... If these were pound for pounds or something, I'd be like, this is Bolton's day, because we'd have some generic six power attacks that we could use. Oh, just as I say that, there's the red pound for pound. So that is really key. Like it's what makes chain decks better. Um, it's actually really important for all three of these classes, really, because your uh, as Prism, your illusionist cards don't pop opposing phantasms. So to have um, those generic six power attacks is really nice. A red Phantasmify and a blue Glisten. So in the last video I talked about, obviously Glisten is nice on uh, Spectral Shields because it hangs around between turns, uh, but it's also really nice for Bolton. Um, I think last time I talked about buffing your attack actions, obviously that doesn't work because it has to go on weapons, but uh, for, buff for buffing your first hatchet attack, um, it can be really nice to allow you to then get in with the second hatchet because uh, you've triggered Bolton's ability um, by having higher than your base power. So Boneyard Marauder, Hungering Slaughter Beast. So four blues in uh, in Brute there is, is pretty nice to start off with. Um, a, another red take flight. So <laughs> tell you what, uh, Bolton is looking pretty good here. A red belittle as well. Uh, a Seek Enlightenment, also another good Bolton uh, light card. A Warmonger's Recital, very happy to see that for Bolton as well. Um, and an Arcanic Crackle, Stubby Hammer is... All right, here we go. It's going to happen. Attack action cards with three or less base power gain plus one strength while attacking this turn can really help you set up a big turn with Bolton. If you don't have a take flight, but you've got like a cross the line instead, you get to go Stubby Hammer is buff the cross the line, uh, and then you can, you're can you off to the races from there. Uh, an Out Muscle and a Tear Limb from Limb, which can set up some pretty powerful brute stuff in uh in limited so definitely worth thinking about as a three power resource uh, sorry three pitch resource that then comes in in the late game and you can set it up hopefully if you've got enough six power cards so that it's doubling uh the damage of an attack in the late game 
which is exactly where you want to be. So in terms of equipment though, we've got a helm, an Ironhide helm. Is this a, well, I've got a token in the equipment part. An Ironhide helm, a stubby hammer, a halo and an Ironhide plate. So we've already got three slots filled if we are playing Bolton. Um, we've got a couple of slots filled if we're playing Chain, uh, three actually. Uh, and then we've got really only the Ironhide slots filled if we're playing um, Leviathan because the hammers aren't really going to do a lot for us. Three Arcanic Crackles in, in Chain plus the Seeds of Agony is worth keeping an eye on here as well. A Deadwood Rumbler for another six power attack, plus a Graveling Growl, also the same. A Blue Engulfing Light, not the best, uh, but a Red Bolt of Courage. So we've got, th this is just so different to the other Bolton pools because we're actually seeing those red charge attacks coming in, uh, which is pretty huge. And then, you know, a rising, Red Rising Solar Tide, no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, red Illuminate, yeah, so we're getting lots of really powerful red. Um, light attacks and light warrior attacks so i am actually feeling the bolton here i didn't force this at all i didn't come into this saying i'm 100 percent going to play bolton so that i have one video of each in fact i didn't do that to any of the uh, previous pools either but they've just kind of worked out this way which has been nice um a yellow pulping there certainly a nice one for coming in in the late game uh, off the tail limb from limb so if we got another three or four at least uh, six power attacks then we'd be looking pretty good but look at this <laughs> talent difference one shadow card and three six nine ten light cards um, so we're definitely the light heroes are going to have the bigger card pools to choose from here so a herald of protection blue is a really nice one a yellow herald of rebirth a yellow Wooten Hog, really wanting to get those red Wooten Hogs. Like we want to get up to three or four six power generics for this Bolton deck, ideally. Um, a Red Seek Enlightenment, very nice. Dream Weavers, uh, and an Invigorating Light and a Soul Reaping. So, ooh, Chain coming in with the, the last minute hits and double Invigorating Light plus Dream Weavers plus Halo of Illumination. Just really, Prism also putting in a strong showing here. So one pack to go, and we've got uh, pretty much a full equipment set. Uh, no, we haven't got any boots. Okay, so we've got, but we've got three powerful pieces of, of equipment for Prism uh, between the Dreamweavers, the Halo, and then the, the Iron Rot Gauntlet. So if we've got Iron Rot legs here, because obviously the Iron Rot equipment is a lot better if you can pitch a yellow to block for four. Um, if we've got Iron Rot legs, you know, Prism's equipment loadout would be looking about as good as it gets, really. Um, without legendaries um, and Bolton still looking decent as well so we are filling out on the the class cards here for the shadow heroes um, with another hungering slaughter beast and boneyard marauder coming in also being um, a seven power attack um, on the hungering slaughter beast is nice and the the red deadwood rumbler there as well engulfing light so we did another red charge attack is really nice but we are just falling off a little bit i feel here uh, on the bolt index so we've got two belittles and the one minnowism now which is fine that is fine for a little uh, minnowism belittle package oh a foil shadow of ursa in the last pack here and then a soul harvest wow okay so some heavy hitters there in our final pack, which is also coincidentally also our final pack of the box. Um, so hatchet of mind off to the side, and there's those iron hide legs. Oh wow, this is uh this might be the best pool that we've had. We got both Soul Reaping and Soul Harvest and Shadow of Ursa. Um we've only got so we've got a yellow demigon, two yellow demigons, one red seeds. Uh yeah, we've got a little bit going on here in Chain, but even with the Shadow of Ursa, I think the, the dearth of Shadow Talent cards, even though we can certainly play both Void Wraith and Ghostly Visit, I'm probably leaning more towards the Light Heroes just because of this imbalance, but you know, I think any of the four decks with this pool would be pretty good. Like, we've also got not... Like, the generics are okay and i think they would spread pretty well also across all the different heroes there's there are a couple of belittles and a minnowism there are a couple of um 
uh, stony wooten hogs uh, in higher uh, pitch values as well as this out muscle and things which helps us to fuel the prisms or the the levias but we've also got a few red cards as well as this red pound for pound which is great for everybody so um yeah generic's not really tilting us anywhere uh shadow versa and the rest of the chain pool certainly serviceable but i think we'll put it aside for now and gee it's it's hard to say no to a levia pool that has um, a tear limb from limb and a soul harvest in it, I have to say, particularly when we've got what, one, two, three, four, five, six other uh, blues for the soul harvest, including the tear limb from limb. Um, but even if you were to say, you know, we've got five other blues other than soul harvest and tail limb from limb, if we set up a game state where we're pitching this early, pitching this early, and then relying on pitching out other blue resources to get them to the bottom of our deck. You can easily see setting up a, a Soul Harvest um, tail in from limb turn with one of them in Arsenal um, that, you know, is going to kill just about anybody. Uh, the question is whether you can obviously survive that long um, and also whether you've got enough sixes. So we've got the Soul Harvest, which ideally we wouldn't want to be blocking with, but which is a six in a pinch. Uh, then we've got probably so three six sixes and then none coming out of the shadow talent pool so i think that's probably just not enough like it, it's not enough to make the uh tail in from limb reliable um and it's not enough to make our levira ability reliable but also just look at the number of cards like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen which is actually more i think than we had last time in levia but only two playable cards from shadow um so 13 14 15 you know, we can play what I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 18. So we'd have to play just about every generic in order to get a, a playable Levi deck. And I think, even though generics are pretty good, um, I think I want to start off with uh, building Bolton and Prism here. Uh, we did hit some pretty decent uh, Prism rares as well with uh, double Phantasmify, as well as hitting the Dreamweavers. But since we haven't built a Bolton deck yet, and we have got so many um, red charge attacks, let's just see what we can do here between all of those um, Bolton cards, plus also some Seek Enlightenments and other things out of the light card pool here. So we'll put Prism off to one side as well. Uh, we'll get out what is also thankfully, a full kit of Bolton equipment. The hammer has replaced the gauntlet and the halo of illumination. Uh, but we've also obviously got the, the gauntlet there if we feel we'd need it. But I think in most games, we're going to prefer the hammerers, particularly with the type of Bolton deck that we've got here, where we've got quite a few really good attack actions um, that the hammerers are going to benefit to help push them over the edge. So we'll put our equipment just off to the side here, knowing that we've got the four relevant pieces. And then we'll lay out our attack actions. So we've got charging actions here, non-attack actions here, and then we'll have other attack actions as well. So as you can see, a really decent chunk of charging actions, three, six, seven ways to charge. As I said in the first pool, we had a similar number, um, but they just weren't of the same quality. Like if you've got seven and you've got a couple of blue engulfing light and maybe a, a blue bolt of courage and a, a blue express lightning, it's just really not the same quality pool as when you know that you've got two red take flights um, and then some other red charge actions. Uh, although we do have to obviously be aware that we're not gonna be charging every turn. Um, so then we've got some other attack actions that we can consider playing. Impenetrable Belief, so maybe uh, Invigorating Light probably makes it in, even though the three cost can be a little bit challenging in Bolton. We've got the Seek Enlightenment to help buff our Cross the Line, Engulfing Light, Bolt of Courage, etc. Uh, we've got another Illuminate, a Blinding Beam, which is going to be a sideboard card for us. Uh, red Illuminate. Red Rising Solitides. So these, these Illuminates and Rising Solitides are just going to help us fuel our soul a little bit, as is the Invigorating Light. 
The Seek Enlightenment's are, you know, gonna help us to hopefully craft some of those big turns. We've got a Glisten to help us uh, get there with the uh, the weapons if we need to uh, in a pinch. Also, it's a, just a decent blue that can help us do things like, you know, play an Illuminate. So very happy to have that in the deck, even though it doesn't block. Uh, that is obviously a downside. And this blue Invigorating Light is gonna be pretty good for us here, I think. Uh, and then a, a Rising Solitide. So we've ended up with just heaps of light attacks here, which is gonna mean that, A, if we're not charging, it's not a huge deal because we can put out a bit of damage anyway. Uh, but B, when we do charge, um, we're gonna be able to hopefully set up some pretty decent turns where we can follow up a take flight with, you know, a red impenetrable uh, belief or something, or, uh, you know, even a red illuminate is fine. Doesn't cost any resources. You know, we can pitch a red to save it for later. Um, something powerful that we want to get to the bottom of our deck to play the take flight. We can charge something that's not such a big deal to charge away. One of our generic cards, for example, that we're not so uh, wedded to, and then come in with a, an illuminate for zero um, using the go again. Uh, if we pitched a yellow instead of a red, then we could fo potentially follow the illuminate up with a weapon attack as well, depending on what else we had going on. Um, or we could just follow our take flights up with weapon attacks um, and then look to, to set, punish them with second swing. So we've got a few options. We've also got the plow through. Uh, we've got the seek enlightenment that can help to pump um, our illuminates and other things to then allow us to chain into the other go agains. In order to set up those turns, so if you think about a turn where you go take flight, charge a generic, uh, play a seek enlightenment, then play an illuminate or come in with a weapon as your fourth card uh, or play illuminate then come in with a weapon sorry so that way you're set actually setting up the take flight attack uh charging this the seek enlightenment uh play illuminate the illuminates got higher than its base power from the seek enlightenment so you can banish the card from your soul that you charged here to give the illuminate go again um, and then you want resources to be able to come in with your weapons because the Illuminate's got go again. Um, in, on those turns, you can see here, this is four cards. So we'd have to have something like the Take Flight in Arsenal or you know one of these others in Arsenal. Um, and then we still need another resource to come in with our weapon. Um, so yeah, because we need to have a, a card to actually pay for all of this to, to give us our resources. So in order to do that, there, what I'm trying to illustrate with that, I guess, is that there are going to be turns where we want three resources. So if there are going to be turns where we want three resources, we need to have a few more blues in our deck because at the moment we've only got one, two, three. So when we're looking through these generics, we want to be really prioritizing at least getting sort of three or four other blues. So a blue stony Wooten Hog, totally serviceable. When it comes back off the bottom of the deck, you play it and attacks for four, fine. Uh, a yellow stony Wooten Hog, totally fine as well. Uh, these Belittles and the Minnowism can certainly get in there. Um, they are perfectly serviceable uh, attack, uh, attack actions that are going to have go again and allow us to chain together decent turns as well. Um, Minnowism in the non-attack action pile. Um, Yinti Yanti Blue, that's a, that's a maybe. Uh, it's not so good in Bolton. The pound for a pound definitely gets in. Zealous Belting not quite so good in Bolton. So again, we'll think about that, but you know, two for five, it's okay. Yinti Yanti off to the side again. Surging Militia is exactly the sort of thing we want. So these decent chunky attack actions that we can pitch. And then when we draw them again in the late game actually help us close out the game. Uh, Overload is fine to follow up some of these charge attacks with another free attack. Uh, and Zealous Belting again, I think we'll just hold off to the side here as a maybe. Frontline Scout. It's a, it's a decent, it's a maybe, I think. Like, that's that's probably, it's coming in ahead of the Yinti Yanti, um, but it's still one that we don't necessarily want to play. Uh, Yellow Overload, again, I'm a bit iffy on, but I think it's probably okay. Uh, Blue Out Muscle, that's kind of where we want to be, even though that's a tough one, because that muscle will be harder to play for us in the late game, because it does cost three to play, and we don't have heaps of other things, but I guess if we get a blue onto the bottom, uh, playing an out muscle, getting in for four, uh, and then being able to come in with something else from our hand, hopefully an overload or a, uh, where are we? Uh, where are we in the light action? What's the zero cost light attack again? I'm losing myself here. Anyway, coming in with another zero cost attack is gonna be ideal. 
Illuminate. There it is, hiding under there. Uh, so Adrenaline Rush, totally fine. Happy to play that. Rally the Rear Guard and a Warmonger's Recital. So I feel like we've ended up with a lot of cards here. Let's just count them up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 attack actions here, which are not um, charge attacks. 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry about the camera focus there. I think that's why I'm waving my arms in front. So 34, and I think 35 from the Glisten, these blinding beams in the sideboard. That's totally fine. I'd rather have a few more cards in a, in a deck like this because it's going to be a bit grindy. It can be a bit hard with Bolton to, to close out the game, uh, but we've certainly got the tools and the the cards that we're happy to pitch early that are going to come in for enough damage later to hopefully be able to close it out. Uh, we don't have too many cards that don't block, um, and we do have lots of red charge cards and just red attacks generally that are hopefully going to mean our average output is reasonably high for a Bolton deck. Um, and we've got lots of avenues to having two, sometimes three, on an amazing turn with an arsenal card, even four attacks, which is really where you want to be. Uh, between that and our four equipment, including the stubby hammers, which is just going to drive those big turns over the top, um, and our two ironhide uh, equipment, which is going to give us, a, at some point in the game, a two pitch for four block, which can be a huge swing. Like that's an amazing difference that that makes in terms of our ability to actually come back at our opponent. Having a few extra cards in our deck means that we're not too worried about getting exhausted either. Um, so all in all, this is, you know, we don't have the Luminar Ascension. We don't have the V of the Vanguard. We haven't got the super powerful bolts and stuff going on. Um, but we have got what I think is a really serviceable, um, Bolton deck that has, you know, two of your best common attack action in the best pitch value uh, and plenty of other really impactful and synergistic cards going on in there. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed. Uh, that'll be, uh, we've run through a whole box of, um, of Monarch there. So that'll be the last in this initial series of Monarch sealed deck videos. I hope you've enjoyed them. If you'd like to see more sealed deck videos, uh, please let me know. Um, there's always always more product around and um, if it's something that you guys enjoy, uh, then I'm happy to do more of it uh, in the lead up to the calling. I know lots of people are interested in developing the way they're thinking about sealed deck um, in anticipation of hopefully coming along to the calling in Melbourne, uh, which is in a few weeks time. So if you do want to see more of this content, let me know. Uh, and as always, if you enjoy it, please like and subscribe to the support the channel and uh, I'll hopefully see you soon. Thanks very much.